So I'm going to relay four messages for you and then we'll um, kind of unpack these messages one by one. The first thing here is they mention here a falling out that is that can be easily avoidable, okay? So I feel like it's requiring you to be patient and I know that during um, Mercury retrograde period, which is gonna start on the 22nd and the 23rd of this month, um, some things can kind of slip out. We can say things with the wrong intonation, with the wrong emphasis, and it can sound a lot harsher than it should be or other people can misunderstand or misinterpret things that are said. So communication, it is really, really pertinent for you guys to try to tone down a little bit, okay? So that means being mindful about what you're saying. Don't say things when you're a little bit stressed out, when you're angry, when you're not operating at your best, and, and especially when you're frustrated, okay? It's, it's just not gonna lead to, um, it's going to lead to a lot of misunderstanding. So if you can, you know, try to make a conscious effort to do that. The second message that I'm seeing here is thinking about dividing up assets. And I feel for many of you, uh, there's a lot of communication coming, um, coming through regarding this. Some of you are kind of like doing some, you know, estate planning. I'm giving this to, you know, Bob, I'm giving this to the grandkids, I'm giving this to, you know, Aunt Jane, I'm giving this to um, the, the distant cousins. So I feel like some um, estate planning. And then for others, it's almost like uh, downsizing, giving your stuff away, giving out gifts for those of you who have recently returned from a trip and you bought a bunch of souvenirs. And then for others, it's like taking on, um, taking on requests for people who are telling you, you know, oh, you're taking a trip this summer, so here are the things that I want you to buy for me, or can you buy these things for me? So I see that taking requests and then, you know, dividing up assets. The third message that I have here is, um, this is a longing, this is an inner longing for many of you guys, longing for the exotic. And I feel like it could be a seasonal thing, for those of you who are still, you know, who are living in the uh, Northern Hemisphere, the weather can be a little bit colder. We're like breaking into spring. So what that does for me is that it's, um, it's saying longing for the exotic, longing for the tropics, the humidity, the sunshine, the warmth, wanting to have, you know, uh, opportunities to go out and socialize in an environment that would permit. So some of you are feeling a little bit cooped up and then others of you longing for the exotic basically means um, the environment that you're in is a little bit stiff or sterile or a little bit too formal and you want an environment that is less formal. You want an environment that is a little bit more carefree and you want the weather and the environment that can cater to that. Some of you are longing to be, you know, especially for those in the Northern Hemisphere, wanting to be in the Southern Hemisphere, wanting the the, the smells, the um, the intensity, the colors, the, the tactile experience of living in a more, I want to say like under the developed world or under developed country or a country that is a little bit more robust where there's more music where there's more culture so i feel like you're tired of the uh, i guess homogeneity of your own culture and you're wanting to go somewhere else where the culture is a little bit more mixed blended and just more diverse uh fourth message here wanting to evade responsibilities and to self-indulge, you know, to indulge in things and wanting to, uh, it's, it's like wanting to feel like, you know, I've worked so hard and it's time for me to enjoy it. Wanting to even like shirk off responsibilities or like wanting to say no to a lot of people that you never would have thought about saying no to in the past. So this actually might be a good time for you to exercise this free will. We do have a lot of uh, that Mercury retrograde period, which is going to extend through April. So if you feel if you feel like your gut is telling you, you know, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to take on this project. I'm, I don't want to work with these people or they're not telling me the whole story. If you feel that nudge, it would be in your best interest to possibly say no. And, or you can tell them yes, but later or, you know, uh, not right now. Let's resume this conversation in the end of spring. So it is or the end of uh, April, excuse me. So it would it, 
it's within your right to be able to say that and to give them a timeline where when you can, you know, reconvene at a later date. Um, it's actually going to be in your best interest and I feel like it would work out well for you. If you feel like something's off or you're you energetically, you don't want to take on additional projects, additional work right now, definitely don't because Mercury retrograde t cycles are not good times to start new things. So I feel like you have that uh, going against, uh, going for you. Okay, you have that going for you, working for you. And so taking the time off instead to indulge a little bit, to recoup, to regenerate, to recuperate, um, it's totally fine. Okay, so let me break down these um, concepts and see how it relates to certain areas of your life. Okay, so first of all, a falling out. Um, I feel like there has been a recent falling out in the past for many of you. And then for others of you, it's like an ongoing tenuous relationship that you're still trying to, you're still trying to unravel. You're still trying to figure things out and you feel some of you, um, the other person feels interrogated. The other person feels attacked. And then for others of you, you feel interrogated, you feel under attack. So I definitely feel there are ideological differences here. Uh, one person sees the situation in one way. The other person just sees it in a totally different manner. And so there is a big stalemate. And I feel like it's a source of contention for quite some time. This is not something brand new. Um, for some of you, this is a marriage partner, okay? Like somebody you were once married to and now you're thinking about uh, divvying up your assets. So the first and the second messages are kind of blended in with this one falling out. So some significant turning point in a major relationship. For others of you, squabbles with siblings. And this time it's um, it's a little bit more, um, it's like, you know, we, we have squabbles with siblings most of the time. But this time, I feel like the sibling is out of bounds. I feel like if you have that sibling, they're out of bounds. They're doing something that it, you consider to be very inconsiderate. At other times, you you know, you love them, so you don't really, you wouldn't really say like, oh, you're being inconsiderate. But I feel like this is the month where that temper might flare up. It's going to come back together. So that's not, you know, if it's a sibling, I feel like it needed to be said because I feel like they're taking advantage of a situation and you kind of need to set the record straight for them and you kind of need to draw that line in the sand because they're not really aware of how you're perceiving them. So I do see that coming through. And then for others of you, it's playing out in your work environment, okay? Um... There is a person in your work environment here, and this is like a career, you know, like a supervisor, a person that you're like a coworker, supervisor, or somebody that has a lot of skills, a lot of expertise, and a lot of experience under their belt. So my advice for you guys is if you're approaching this person and you're asking them for some, you know, um, technical expertise or guidance, just know that they are an expert in their field. OK, so that means they're in, in high demand. Their time is very, very limited. And so they're going to tell you everything that they know in a very short amount of time that I see somebody who's talking really, really fast. And you're just like you're, you're spinning in circles because you're having a hard time. Um, you're having a hard time retaining all the information. That's just what it is. And I also feel some of you might be interrupting the other person and they're not taking kindly to that. So if they're saying things really fast and you're just like, wait, 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 let me, I feel like there is definitely miscommunication here and you have to let the other person finish up their train of thoughts because all of your questions will be answered if you let them finish up, you know, like their spiel, their, their, um, that's their area of expertise. They've already anticipated um, some of the questions that you will have, and they're addressing all of them, and they will take the time to address all of them. So the best thing is listen and don't interrupt because there's going to be um, ego flare up with this person, okay? I'm feeling an air sign here, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. Um, I see a, a very strong feminine air sign, so like um, a female air sign. 
And I feel like that's somebody that is heavily in your work. You're either working in close collaboration with them. They could be a supervisor or somebody who's giving you a lot of technical information. And you need to kind of like just let them do their thing. Try to absorb as much information as you can. Um, show them that respect because I feel like they don't like to be interrupted. Okay. They're really going to help you in your work environment. But I feel like the relationship needs to start off on a good footing in order for it to advance in the future. So I feel like the way you communicate and the way this person communicate, you're just like, they're very cold, they're very sterile. I don't really know if you, if, if they know everything that they're talking about. So I feel like you have your doubts, you have your um, skepticism as to how much this person really knows. And I feel like they do know a lot. So you, you want to, you know, even if you're skeptical, let them talk, right? The best way to know about somebody truly is let them talk. And through them, through listening and hearing, it's very revealing as to how much someone really knows. So, you know, use that same tactic when you're approaching this person. Um, what I'm also feeling as well is um, you're in a work environment where there is a lot of communication. It's like, it's like you're a salesperson or you have to disseminate information. You're required to think on your feet, to talk really, really quickly and to be very, very assertive. And I feel like for many of you, that assertion, that uh, assertiveness is not being utilized. So I don't know why that is, but I feel like you need to really stand your ground and you need to be very assertive and you need to, you know, for us to be very assertive, we have to know what we're talking about, right? We, I feel like for you guys, it's really hard for you guys to fake it. Like air signs, it's really easy for them to fake it. Even if they don't know something, they command a situation. They're very, very authoritative when they talk and they can convince, you know, anybody of anything. But I feel like for you guys, when you're not sure about something, you don't want to just say it. But I feel like in the work environment, you have to pretend that you're sure of what you're saying. When you waver, that's when, you know, the clients, the customers, the, the people that you're dealing with, they're going to overstep their boundaries or they're going to see that as a weakness and they're going to use that against you. So aiming to be a little bit more curt, to be a little bit more authoritative and to really stand your ground and, you know, don't waver, don't falter. If you're not sure about something, in that moment, pretend like you know, and then go back and do the background research or do the follow up. Okay. So I feel like your ability to really assert yourself to, to really stand firm and to take control of that situation so that the other person cannot bully you or cannot pressure you. That is really, really important for this month. Um, the dividing up assets also ties into that idea about, you know, needing to be very assertive, needing to stand your ground, needing to not let people walk all over you and to compromise on things that are important to you. That is crucial. Okay. So don't be that doormat and don't let people think like, um, it's like they, they, they're saying here, don't let people run circles around you. Okay, it's like they're throwing a lot of information at you and they're trying to catch you at a point where you're frazzled and weak. And whatever they say, I feel like it's it's pertinent for you to filter out the information and to capture the stuff that's important because I feel like you're getting sensory overload or information overload and you don't know what's important. You don't know what's um, relevant. You don't know what's like um, irrelevant. So finding somebody that can really help you with, you know, the whole process about disseminating or uh, retaining important information. That's going to be very crucial. So I have here the going off to the third message. There is going to be an expansion in the work environment where you are dealing with exotic people. I'm seeing a lot of people of uh, Middle Eastern, like um, I'm seeing that, that Central Asia, Middle East, uh, the Mediterranean and also North Africa. Okay. So like 
people from those areas where there is a mix of culture, like Middle Eastern culture, even North African culture, and a little bit of European influence. So I'm seeing like a lot of exotic people coming into your work environment or you're communicating or dealing with them extensively. And I feel like there is a sense of you being very mesmerized, very taken in, very um, happy dealing with these people. So make sure you remain or maintain that professional distance. And as well, make sure that it's like, don't let people, um, you know, run circles around you. Okay. They might try to charm you, try to get a good deal or try to get you to do favors for them. You're very good at um, sniffing these, um, these brown nosers. You're, you're really good at identifying them. Okay. And you, but I feel like they're, they're flattering and you're also, uh, quite enamored with them. And I don't feel like it's just romantic partners. It can be, but I feel like it's more clients, more people that you're coming into contact with. It's different, it's new, and it's very exotic. And it's exciting, and you're going to want to please. You're going to want to please them. You're going to want their business. You're going to want their friendship. You're going to want their company. So just make sure you are not blindsided, okay? Um, I'm also feeling as well, they say like... Um, favors okay people asking you for favors and stuff pick your battles and especially you know if it's uh, not something you can't do learn to say no it's it's um it's within your right to say no all right and for others uh, who have just recently returned from a long vacation you're conjuring up and thinking about and planning out your next vacation, which I feel is really exciting. And it's really good to see you guys. I, I love it when I see like a lot of earth signs traveling. It's good for you guys to, you know, um, up, I, I want to say uproot and, you know, be a transplant because you're going to be learning a lot. And I feel like, you know, um, if while, while you're able body travel as much as you can, that's like one of the best things that we can do for ourselves as a member of the human race, you know, to learn from others, to experience new things and to do it while we're able body. So I see a lot of planning here for many of you and it looks really, really good. Um, the fourth thing and the last message, wanting to evade responsibility and to indulge in a, a little bit, uh, work environment there is a major slowdown okay so like there is a major slowdown and you're kind of sitting there twiddling your thumb like what do we do there's a lot of people working so that means um the it's like full employment so wherever you're working there's a lot of people there's work and everyone is chipping in to get the work done so uh no one's working overtime no one is like stressed out no one is burnt out because you know, the work is getting done. And so you might be very efficient with your work. And as a result, you're just like, I already finished. And uh, you're sitting there like thinking, what's next? What am I going to do now? I'll go for a walk. I'll take a longer lunch and so on and so forth. And uh, I feel like if you're in a new work situation, the best thing to do is to figure out like, you know, don't just um, take that long lunch take the initiative to do something else, take an in the initiative to even go to your supervisor and just be like, I'm done with my work. Uh, is there anything else you can, I can help you with? Or is there anything else you need me to do? Um, are there other priorities you need me to take care of right now? Uh, first of all, it's going to be very good for you, mainly because it's showing it allows you to show your supervisor that I'm done ahead of schedule. I'm willing to help. I'm willing to be a team player. But I also feel on an energetic level, it's allowing you to progress and learn new skills. So if you find yourself, you know, sitting around, there isn't any work done. Take the initiative to do more. And you might already, you know, think about you, like you're making that calculus in your head. Well, if I overachieve, if I excel, then uh, they're going to dump more responsibilities on me. And it's true depending on where you work, but I feel in this environment, um, it's, it's a fair trade. It's a fair exchange because you're learning new things, but you're also the time permits, right? And then I feel like for many of you, you've got a um, good supervisor. You've got somebody that is fair, but I feel like, you know, once again, don't interrupt when they're talking, like just let them talk and just 
kind of calmly shake your head, go back to your desk and then try to figure out, try to filter out what they're trying to tell you. OK, so I feel like it's really important here that um, that you work with the person that's with you and you kind of like if you there is free time, take on more responsibilities. I feel like it's going to be in your best interest. It's going to go over well with your supervisor or your superiors. It's also going to let you kind of like streamline ahead of the curve, that learning curve, because you're taking on more responsibility. So it's going to be helpful all the way around. OK, so that is what I have for you here, Taurus, for the month of March. Take it easy towards the end of this month. There will be, you know, difficult customers, difficult clients and overall communication issues. I do see a lot of family gathering that's going to be happening this month. So that's going to bode well for you. Um, take time to revisit family. OK, if you're choosing, do I visit? Do I um, travel to see my friends or do I travel to see my families? Um, you can't really go wrong, but I would say take it easy, indulge a little bit at the end of the month and, you know, don't let the Mercury retrograde energy affect you too much. Okay.